Hi there, we are the Overall Nerds. Welcome back to the first episode of this brand new series we're doing called Movie Wars. He's going to pick a movie randomly, I'm going to pick a movie randomly, and we're basically going to fight about it and see who wins. Okay, so basically we have a website here, mm. right, and it's all Marvel films today for this episode. Um, so, not just MCU, it can be anything, the X-Men universe, uh, Spider-Man, anything. Right. Um, so yeah. Shall I go first? You go first. Ethan. Uh, the movie Ethan has to argue with is... Thor Ragnarok. Like a, That's, like a, a, That's a good one. That's a good one. Alright, cool, 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 cool. Okay. My turn, my turn. Three, two, one. Ooh, Captain America Civil War, the battle of the third films, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, All right, take some time to think of your argument. Which film is better? That's a hard one. That is a hard one. Okay. Right, we're gonna go. Three, okay. Two. Do you wanna go first? You go first. Three, okay. two, one, go. All right. I think Ragnarok's definitely better from the Civil War. I think it reinvents a Thor character, which gave him some longevity, and it gave us what we gave in Infinity War. Uh, the comedy works. The action works. It feels creative. It just brought life into a into a franchise that was, it felt like it was dying, mm. and um, I, I comparing it to Civil War, I don't know. At some parts, it does feel like Civil War's not living up to its title. That kind of Civil War aspect. Ten seconds. If I'm looking up to like the impact that Ragnarok had for Thor and how it reinvented him, and looking at Civil War and what it did, I think Ragnarok has more impact overall. Yeah. Okay. So Captain America: Civil War, right? Let's think about the hype about this film. Forget you know all this other stuff. Infinity War wasn't even a thing. I mean, it was, but it wasn't. You know, we had it was a while away. You know, there's no setup. It was just this, mm. right? It was the aftermath of Agent Ultron. It was Captain America and, and Tony Stark at each other's throats, and you had all the Avengers in it. It was a first film that just made it really feel like a universe. It wasn't an Avenger film, right? It was just a Captain America film that made sense. Where it had all these other characters in it, and it established uh, Bucky's encapsulation even more than it did. It had amazing fight scenes. Don't forget that airport fight scene was sick. It had mm. Ant Man introduced into the Avenger roster, you know, Tony, and it had a good story as well. One of the really good villains, Baron Zemo. And one thing we can't forget is the long lasting consequences. Because of this film, Infinity War exists. Because of this film, Thanos won. Because of what happened in this film, Endgame had to happen. Mm. I, I understand what, what you mean when it says it leads nicely into Infinity War and everything like that. But at the same time, I do look at its central theme of the Sokovia record, uh, records, course, yeah. and it kind of just leaves that to the side. Mm. Whereas what I'm saying with Ragnarok is, it kind of made Thor a centerpiece now. Without Ragnarok, Thor probably doesn't exist in MCU anymore. Do you like, think they would have like, him out? Do you think they would have just him out? I don't say write him out, but I think they would have definitely made him a more background character. Yeah. Like you just check up on him, just in movies. He would be more what, what Hulk is, like he's a sideline character. But then you have to assume that they were making Infinity War and Thor Ragnarok at a very similar time. Hmm. So they didn't realise what Thor Ragnarok was going to do for the character in terms of audience. And well, yeah, was the, I think that was like the background bit. They were like, look, the first two movies, they've been alright, but they haven't really worked for us. We just want you to do whatever. And I think what Taika does with that film, uh, I'm just thinking about the impact between the two, it has to go to Ragnarok. Like, it just, just the, the, the way it portrays Thor in more of a jokey way, it doesn't go as far as Blood and Thunder did, mm. but like it keeps him nicely grounded. He's a life, um, he has that trauma with him, within him. He has um, come to terms with who he wants to be. Mm. It makes him more powerful than ever. It makes you see Thor as Thor, mm. God of Thunder, instead of just this like uh, arrogant, uh, selfish brat like before, or like kind of just this Shakespearean God. Yeah. I think what's interesting about these films, and it's quite interesting, these have been like randomly given to us. Um, is they have all the, if you went together, they have all the Avengers in it. So it's Cap and Tony and Thor and Hulk, mm. right? And I think obviously Hulk is a big part of Thor. But I think Civil War as a film had much more to establish and much more to have to work than Thor Ragnarok. All, all Thor Ragnarok had to do was make it entertaining. Civil War had to have a reason for all true. these things. I think Civil War, yeah, it had to, it had to create the central theme of like, you want to agree with both sides, but Ragnarok is like, it was a film like, oh, why are they doing this? Because after two Thor films, no one really cared anymore. And in fact, 
uh, Thor 2 came out 2013. Even I was a bit surprised when 2017 Thor 3 was coming out because I was mm. just like, we haven't had Thor for ages. Yeah. But in terms of, you know, okay, let's talk about entertaining factors. Yeah, you can argue Thor 3 was a lot more entertaining. But the hype around this film at the time, and people can actually argue that maybe Thor 3 is as good as it is because there wasn't much hype around it at the time. There was just another Thor film coming. I think it was just a great story in itself as well. So, mm. Like it had, it really did come in and shock everyone. You had Hela who was going in there, killing his mates and all that stuff. I think she was a great villain. When compared to Zemo, I think she wins, but also that's not the central villain of Civil War. I guess you could I mean, if we talk about, fine, that's all we're going to do, but if we talk about the, the, the long lasting consequences, not in terms of what I was saying before, but in terms of, you know, Civil War, you know, this storyline, it led to better character development, it meant, led to everything, everything was progressed. So, you know, Steve was no longer, he was no man, he was no longer this, you know, Samarit, good Samaritan that just did everything that his government told him to do. I mean, but we didn't see the impact of that. No, we saw, I mean, we saw the thing, but as arguing what Thor 4 does is, and even if any, to an extent, is yeah, Thor, he was, Thor was established as a really cool guy in Ragnarok. Infinity War kind of takes them back a bit, saying, sorry, yeah, I know you don't need a hammer, but you do need a hammer. Right? Yeah. And Thor 4 kind of takes them back a bit because they've just, he's now gone from being a boring character to just a dumb character, which is what I think happens Thor a lot. I think Thor 4 does, does um, hamper what Thor 3 was doing, but I don't think Infinity War does. I think Infinity War reaffirms that he is that powerhouse. Like, when he enters that, that stage, he flips the whole battle on its head. Mm, he I'm does. sure that is down to um, his thing. Storm, Stormbreaker. Stormbreaker, yeah. But I think it's also just established how Thor's grown as a person to mm. become that more. Like, he needed that experience from Ragnarok of losing so much and losing Loki at the start of Infinity War to become this dude who can just wipe through a whole arm. Yeah. But, like, yeah. I think, and again, I mean, not to go against my own film, but with Civil War, obviously, of course, like, you, some people argue with Avengers 2.5, but to be fair, like, the characters that they have in it, they're only in it for like, the first half. And then after the first half, it's a Cap versus Bucky film, a Cap and Bucky film, right? I mean, if you want to go get your film, <laughs> I think that means I've been one man one. Cause yeah, I mean, look, he's going to I think 4-3, as a film itself, is... I think it has to do more, just overall. Mm. I don't know, what, I think 4-3 was Hulk. That was really good. That I, I love that. And also the whole scene when he gets that power and he jumps into that the, uh, little thing yeah. to, to like, the army of people. Yeah, at the yeah, end. of course. The Hedder's little army, that's great. I just... I just, I do just love what Thor 3 was able to do. It just brought a character back to life, which Civil War didn't, didn't really have to, to do. do. Yeah, it didn't need to do So that. I think just Thor 3 had more on it than Civil War did. Yeah, I think Civil War, looking back, it is a really great film. And it used to be my top five. I don't think it's even my top five anymore. Thor 3 is definitely still my top five. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, I think I'd give it to Thor. Let's go! Okay, that's, that's what I want. That's what I want. Okay, next one. 